may be seated and want to thank you for joining us on this beautiful Sunday morning here in, in Maine. One of these days, spring will get here. But until then, we'll make do the best we can. If you have your Bibles, if you will turn to Romans 15, 13. I felt like today on this message, we need to, we need to be reminded of something. With so much gloom and doom out there, with so much despair and hopelessness, and what we are seeing going on in the news, we've got to remember where our strength and our joy comes from. In Romans 15, 13, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. And so this morning I just want to minister on joy. Just having joy. And some of this I'll be taking from a, a Bible study that Ethan Hagen, Ethan Hagen uh, uh, wrote there in Pentecostal Life, a UPCI publication. Uh, so some of the scriptures and some of his his. Uh, points I'm going to also include in my sermon. So I don't want to be accused of being a plagiarism. Uh, so, you know, so it's going to be a kind of a mixture between his and my, my views. But Romans 15, 13 says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy. Now we know that there's only one way to have joy. And that is through the power of God's Spirit, through the Holy Ghost. For without that, it's impossible to have joy. You can have happiness. You can have happiness all the time, but happiness comes and goes. Happiness is a momentary emotion. But joy comes from within. You know, you can, happiness is, something can happen in your life and you're happy. And then two hours later, you could be sad again. But when you have the joy that God gives you, it never fades, it never goes away as long as you nurture that and take care of that. One of the keys to overcoming spiritual fatigue is the joy of the Lord. We all get spiritual fatigue. But to overcome that is the joy of the Lord. Just as vitamins help supplement the nutrients in our bodies, we need to stay healthy to fight off the diseases and any infections that's in our body. We need the joy of the Lord that flows from the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit of God. We need that just as much as we need nutrients in our body. We need the joy of the Lord flowing through us and giving us that hope, giving us that, that peace in mind, that knowing that we are with the Lord and what the Lord can do in our lives despite what's all going on around us, despite what's going on in our lives. People have been on their deathbed, racked in disease, but they've had the joy of the Lord up until the moment they finally closed their eyes. You could see it in their face. The joy that God gives them even in the moment of desperation. God gives them that joy and that peace in their bodies, in their lives. It strengthens us and helps us to maintain a spiritually healthy life. Just like the body, a lot of people are spending a lot of time, a lot of money exercising, getting themselves in shape. You see that all over the place. Well, we, as children of the Holy Ghost, as the children of God, we need to pay just as much attention to our spiritual strength, our spiritual conditioning, as much as to the body. Because it is a spiritual condition that will sustain us through all else. When everything else fails, when you can't exercise, when you can't do all that stuff, the spiritual strength that you have will carry you through anything. And what the joy that God gives you and what he can do. Galatians 5.22, just, short, short just a short part. But the fruits of the Spirit is love. Joy, love and joy. That's part of the fruits of the Spirit that God gives a Holy Ghost filled believer is that love and that joy. Have you ever found yourself worn out from a long day of work 
or just running around just trying to do things. And at the end of the day, you're just slap tired. You're just, you're just tired. We all have, we all have these days unless we're living on caffeine 24-7. <laughs> we all have those days when it just seems like we just, and we are just so busy from the time we get up in the morning until we lay our head down to rest. We are just so busy. And a lot of times people are just can't shut their minds off. And their minds are just still running, 20, running like a freight train as they're trying to get some sleep. Their mind just won't shut off. Fatigue is an unfortunate part of the human experience. We all are going to get fatigued. We're all going to get tired at times. We're all going to get weary. You know, the Bible says, be not weary in well-doing. Don't get tired of, doing, of being well-doing. Don't get tired of doing the right things. Don't get tired of doing what you know that you need to do. Even Jesus, in his humanity, grew weary in John 4, 6. And there are times when he would have to get off by himself and just pray. Many a night, he would spend that stay up all night praying just to get that, that renewed strength and that joy that God wanted to give him because he grew weary. The throngs of people always pressing him. All the pressures of just trying to live a life sometimes gets to you. Isaiah observed that fatigue can often affect all age groups. It don't discriminate. Fatigue does not discriminate. When he said in Isaiah 40, 30, Even a youth shall faint and be weary, and a young man shall utterly fall. It doesn't matter what age you are, you can grow weary and you can grow tired. You may think there's an exception because your child or your grandchildren are just constantly going. You're thinking, my goodness, where did they get all that energy? Because it just seems like it never stops. You can only dream of having that energy again and how you used to have it. But when you look in their bedroom in the wee hours of the night, you see where they're fast asleep. They're recharging. They're regenerating that energy in them so that when they get up in the morning, off they go again. We all have to regenerate our energy. We all have to renew our energy. If exhaustion is a reality of life in the natural, so is exhaustion in the realm, in the reality of the spiritual life that a child of God has. We can get exhausted. We can get tired. And we can sometimes get so tired that we can't, we can't pray because we're so tired or we don't pray. When we first experience salvation, we seemingly have the energy of a little child. All that excitement, all that love that you felt when you got the Holy Ghost, all that excitement that was in you. And we find a new meaning of living for the Lord and how exciting it is. But just because we have been born again into a, another spiritual world does not mean that this present world has faded away. It is still there. We still got to live in this present world. It, it's always constantly bombarding us. The news media and, and this COVID thing and now the Ukraine and then the things going on in our government, inflation, the, the high gas prices, it can wear you out to the point that it can affect you spiritually and get you into a, a depression that God does not want you to have because you are a child of God. You've got the Holy Ghost. And he wants to renew you. Sooner or later, we come face to face with reality. We become weary, spiritually fatigued, and exhausted in trying to live for God in this present world and in this present condition that we are in. We are not exempt, even though we have been baptized in Jesus' name and filled with God's Spirit, we are not exempt from these very same issues. But the good news is the Lord will empower us and renew our strength. That's the good news. He will empower us, and he will renew your strength. The prophet Isaiah wrote in Isaiah 40, 29 through 31, He giveth power to the faint. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. 
Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up with wings as eagles, and they shall run and not grow weary. Renew. Allow the Lord to renew you. Allow the Lord to renew your strength tonight, this morning, on this Sunday morning. We have all, we all have adversaries who will try to discourage, condemn, and sap us of our spiritual strength. There's always a negative person out there in our lives that is just so negative that when we get around them, it just drains us because we get so tired of hearing of all the negativism that this, this person has. Amos had the same problem. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, an adversary shall, there shall be even around about all the land, and he shall bring down thy strength from thee, and thy palaces shall be spoiled. Do not allow adversary in your life whether it's, it's family, whether it's job, whether it's the conditions going around you, whether it's the world events, do not allow you, do, do not allow those adversarial things to rob you of the strength and of the joy of the Lord. Because the joy that God wants to give you joy, he wants to give you peace. And he wants to restore you spiritually. But you've got to allow God to do that. If you are feeling spiritually fatigued, it could be because of the adversary that's all around us. It's there when we get up in the morning. It's there when we leave. Health issues, financial issues, problems, maybe you're having problems with your children or your grandchildren or your family members, whatever, that can drain you. That can emotionally drain you to the point that you have nothing else to give. And now you're just sitting there worn out. If you do not, you do not have to remain weary. Because the Lord, who is our advocate, gives us power to overcome. You don't have to be like that. The Lord Jesus Christ gives us the power to overcome that. What does Acts 1 8 say? You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you. You've got that power. You do not have to accept that spiritual fatigue. You do not have to accept that adversarial condition in your life. But you can raise above that. And despite what's all going on, you can experience a joy in God that will pass us all understanding. And people won't know, how are you doing it? How are you doing it? I'm not doing it. It's what God has given me. It's, the, it's what God has given me the ability because I'm leaning on him. I'm trusting in him. I'm seeking after him. I'm seeking after his righteousness. I'm seeking after his joy. I'm seeking after his peace. I'm seeking after his love. And see what God won't do. The Bible says in Romans 14, 17, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. That's not the kingdom of God, meat and drink, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's what heaven is. It's not about meat and drink, but it's about righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And notice... They say joy in the Holy Ghost. The joy of the Lord is our strength, in Nehemiah 8.10 says. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We try to rely on our own, but the joy of the Lord is our strength. And what God does, sometimes, however, we find ourselves worn out spiritually. And it's not because the enemy is doing it. Neither is just because life happens. It's because of our own doing. We allow negative influences into our lives. What are you watching on TV? What are you watching on that TV set? It could, it could cause you to have depression. It can cause you, it could cause a sap to joy in your life. 
Let me ask you something. Why is it that people get the joy out of watching divorce court or all these other court proceedings? Don't you have enough problems of your own without listening and watching to other people and use that as entertainment? Don't you have enough problems in your life without seeking entertainment of other people who's having their problems? Get rid of that. Get your joy back. Get your peace back. Get the strength of the, of the joy of God back into your life. And get rid of that garbage. That's not entertainment. That's depression antidote. That's depression stuff. We rationalize and make excuses for doing so when we really have just become bored. Our existence with God has become boring. Not because God is boring. It's because we have lost the joy of God in our lives. And that excitement of what God can do. And now joy is not present in our life. It's just now murmuring and complaining. Israel went up and down with that, up and down. One moment they're living for God and everything is going good. Their enemies have been subdued. Next thing you know, they get bored. They backslide, they start bringing other idols in, and God has to bring them under subjection and under servitude of another nation to get their attention. And that's what happens with us. When we start getting bored in God, we start becoming servitude to sin again. The very thing that God delivered us from will come back onto us again. But the joy of the Lord is our strength. But God is long-suffering and merciful and kind. He stands ready to re-energize us spiritually if we will just ask him. Ask him to re-energize you today here. Ask him to re-energize. Lord, I need the joy. I need your joy in my life again. Lord, I need the love and the peace that passes all understanding I need that, Jesus. I'm, I'm growing weary and tired. The song says I'm tired and weary, but I must travel on until the Lord comes and calls, calls me away. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't want to get called away yet, but I want the joy of the Lord in my life. It is during times like these that we can pray as David prayed. In Psalms 51, 12, Restore in me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. David wrote that in a moment when Nathaniel, the prophet Nathaniel, confronted David over his sin with Bathsheba, and, how, and, he, and he murdered, had his, her husband Uriah the Hittite murdered out in the battlefield. And when God, when he was in, was revealed, instead of David trying to make excuses, he went and prayed and asked God to renew in me a right spirit. That Psalm 51 is a recording of that song, that, that psalm that David wrote in a repentant state for what he had done. But restore in me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Allow God today to come into your life. And he will. He will come into your life. Because our salvation comes from him. He can restore the, he can restore the joy. The salvation does not come from us. We can't earn salvation. It's given to us freely by God. And so comes the joy. We can't earn joy. You can't collect it like green stamps. Back in, when I was a kid, we had green stamps. And our parents collected all these green stamps and they get these books. Books and books of these green stamps and they would cash them in for prizes. Well, God's not like that. We can't collect green stamps. He wants to give it to us freely. All we got to do is seek after it and ask and allow God to realign our priorities, our mind, our heart, and our soul to his priorities. And see what God won't do in your life. And see won't you, you'll look at that news and you'll have empathy. But you will not take your joy because you will know that God has got everything under control in the church. And that his church will 
prevail and his church will be protected. No matter what the reason is for your spiritual weariness, the Lord has promised to empower, strengthen, renew, and restore you. It is his will for you to receive this and to maintain it and keep it. And he will do that. What he says in Ephesians 3.16, he, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with, with might by his spirit in the inner man. The riches of his glory to strengthen you. That's why, peop, that's why the Apostle Paul encouraged us that even when we are fatigued, whether physically or spiritually, not to lose heart. 2 Corinthians 4.16, for, for which cause we faint not, but through our in, outward man, though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Though we may perish on the outside, our inward man is renewed day by day. You can be renewed and your joy can be restored today by God's spirit that's within you. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost, God wants to give you the Holy Ghost today, this morning. It is through his spirit you get that joy. There's no joy out there in the world. There's happiness, like I said, but there's no joy. I've, I've, read, I've read articles where people who's won these mega bucks and these power balls, and they think that it's going to bring them happiness. They want to ruin their lives. The majority of them, it ruins their lives. Money can't bring you happiness, joy. Possessions, house, cars can't bring you joy. If you don't believe me, wait until that new car breaks down. See how much joy you have. <laughs> you won't have no joy. See how much happiness you have. You won't have no happiness. You can be renewed. And your joy can be restored today. By God's spirit that's in you, as I said. Stop what you're doing for a moment. Just stop what you're doing for a moment. Take some time and rediscover the joy of your salvation. Remember, remember the day when you got the Holy Ghost. Remember how great that was. Remember how refreshing and how much love that you felt at that moment. Remember when you got baptized in Jesus' name and you went down in that water and you come up out of that water and you felt so clean. And you're, you're and so, so relieved of, the, of all that you had done. That's because God washed away all those sins. Remember that time. Go back. I know our society is trying to, to eradicate our past. But we can't eradicate that moment when God gave us the Holy Ghost. It will always, you will always remember that moment. Or nor when you got baptized in Jesus' name. You will never forget that moment. Never. The joy. Go back. Take some time and discover the joy of your salvation. And see what God won't do. Pray Psalms 16 and 11 out loud. Aloud and say to the Lord. Thy will, thy will show me the path of life. Thy will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there is pleasures forevermore. Let's say that again. Thy will show me the path of life. In thy presence, in God's presence, is fullness of joy. At thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. I ask you today, where are you at with God? Do you have joy? Do you have that peace? You can have that today. God wants to give it to you freely. He won't charge you a cent for it. But you've got to be willing to accept it. You've got to be willing to want to get rid of that despair, to get rid of that, that unhappiness. To get rid of all that clutter that's in your life. Sometimes we spend more time listening to clutter than we do listening to the voice of God. But God wants to come through and give you that. I encourage you 
to seek after God. These altars are open if you want to come down here and see what God has for you. Because he's got joy. He's got strength. And he wants to restore you.